Hello everybody, Nebraska Yak here, and I have in front of me today the CUDA HD from Jackson Kayak. This is an upgrade from the existing CUDA 12 Kayak. It's a little bit longer, a little bit wider, and a few more bells and whistles. I fished out of the CUDA 12 last year and I absolutely loved it. And I'm looking really forward to getting this one on the water as soon as I can here. But first I gotta get it all rigged up. And I'm gonna rig it up today with the Raymarine Dragonfly 7. This is actually my second one. It worked so well last year that when I got this kayak I had to get another one. It's got some of the best brights out there for a sunny days and uh, you can see it crystal clear um, at any time. It's amazing. Uh, everything else you see in front of you here is parts you're going to need in order to rig it correctly and there's so many ways to rig a kayak and a fish finder but this way I found is one of the cleanest ways to do it. There are no uh, wire kinks, no line showing or anything like that. You'll see at the end and I'll let you be the judge if you think it's a clean install or not. But let's go through some of the parts that you're going to need here. So along with the Raymarine comes a little ball, a one inch ball on the back that attaches to the back of it via this nice little screw here. Now out of the box Raymarine gives you a base and a nut that have threads on it. This is okay. It worked pretty well, but it takes a long time to screw down when you're out there on the water. And if you're like me, I want to get on the water fast and I want some mobility. So that's why I use the ram mount one inch ball arm. Now this one I believe is the four inch model. They come in longer lengths as well, but I found that this smaller one really does a good job of stability and gives me that flexibility that I need. Now what I attach that to is either the Yak Attack screw ball, which is a one inch ball, and it has the T-pin on the bottom that goes into the rails on your kayak, which this kayak has lots of them. Or I'll also be installing a stationary ball from Ram Mount, another one inch ball. And this is what I used on my current CUDA and it worked absolutely fantastic. So we'll be attaching that too. Now I'll attach that one, what I use, they're all five millimeter screws with a lock nut. And then to make it watertight, I use these washers here. They have rubber on one side and metal on the other side so that I can torque them down and it's nice and watertight underneath and you'll see how that works in a little bit. One of the trickiest parts to mounting a fish finder on your kayak is being able to pass the cables that go from your transducer up to your fish finder uh, through the kayak and making it watertight. The best thing I have found on the market is actually from Hobie and it's the Hobie through hole wiring kit. Hopefully you can see that there. And it comes with a couple of these. These are grommets, if you will, um, where they have a little hole here. And that fits a rubber piece that matches your fish finder. And I'll show you more about how that works in just a little bit here. It does come with several attachments here. And the reason why it comes with so many, you can see the different sizes, is because they don't know which fish finder you're going to be using. And so they give you several options to match your fish finder if it has one wire or if it has two wires. And you can use the one that matches your fish finder the best. Of course, you're going to need your transducer from Raymarine. And here's a little shielding cover that we'll put on as well. I'll show you how to put that on. Uh, the way we're going to be doing the fish finder, you are going to need some marine goop. This stuff works fantastic. It's been going for years for me and never had any issues with it. 
and a smaller size grommet that we're going to use to uh, pass the cable for the uh, the battery, which we'll cover a little later. Outside of that, the only tools that you're going to need are a drill, some Allen wrenches, preferably metric if you have them. I only have standard here, but they'll work. And you're going to need a drill bit, a one inch drill bit, to drill that hole for the Hobie through hole wiring kit. Now, the instructions from Hobie say to use a regular one inch drill bit, but I can assure you from experience that the round one is much better. So first things first, let's just put the ball on the back of our Raymarine fish finder here. Using the screw, and you just line it up with the little notches here. Tighten on down. All right, nice and snug now. Next, Go ahead and attach your ram mount arm to the back of the Raymarine. The best way to do this, you start to pull the ram mount open here. You'll see that on one side there's a spring. and On the other side it opens when you pinch the other side. I love to take the side that pinches together and attach that to the ball of the Raymarine, like so. Now when I tighten it down, I have a good solid arm and connection with my Raymarine fish finder. As far as connecting it to your rails, it couldn't be easier with the Yak Attack screwball. You just take the screwball and undo the T-nut a bit give yourself some space, slide it into position, and just tighten it hand tight there. Next, holding your Raymarine finder firmly, undo the ram mount a little bit so it opens until it fits right over the ball. Tighten it back down, And you're ready to go. Alright, now it's time to decide where we're going to put the Hobie through hole port. I like to put mine right here, just to the left as you're looking uh, forward on the kayak. Just on the other side of the Jackson Kayak GoPro label that's on this side. And the reason why I put it here, one is so it can stretch uh, quickly over to the Raymarine finder that's on the sliding rail over here, but it also can attach here where I'm going to put the stationary ram mount as well. So I'll go ahead and drill. There we go. Perfect hole. When it comes to mounting your transducer in your kayak, there's really three major ways that I've seen people do it. One is over the side where you mount it on the edge of your kayak and you have like an arm that bends around and will dip into the water. There's the scupper hole method where you mount it inside your scupper hole and in fact this kayak comes equipped to do uh, just that with the Raymarine. But here in Nebraska I fish where a lot of trees have uh, been sunken and a lot of sunken logs and lumps and uh, they always like to find the scupper holes and poke right through them so it would tear up my transducer pretty quick. So the option I've used, and I've always had great luck with it, is using marine goop inside of the hole. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. All right, so it's time to put the transducer inside the hole here. But first I gotta thread it through. I have the bottom of the Hobie through hole port here. And you'll notice that it's got some 
some knobs that uh, are on one side and not on the other. I'm going to put the knobs down and thread it through here past the little notch there. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this inside the hole and thread just the top through here, leaving that other piece below there. Now with the connector through the hole, I'm going to add the rubber ring that will help waterproof this a little bit. And you notice here it's got uh, a lip on the inside. I'm going to put that so it's facing up and will fit nicely. Pass that little notch and down there. Great. Now we're going to take the adapter here, adaptive piece, and you'll notice that it splits open in the middle here. This is so you can actually get the cables attached inside. So I'm going to do the big one first, followed by the small one, and it fits nice and tight as you can see. Now the trick is to slide that up inside of here so that it fits nice and snug. A little bit of adjusting, you can see you can get it nice and tight and waterproof. Now I'm ready to bring the ring up and place it inside. Now all I have to do underneath is use the threaded ring that I put on earlier and tighten it down. Once you have it all cinched down, you have a watertight seal and you have your cable able to go in and out fairly easily and attach to your Raymarine like so. I also like to put a stationary mount on my kayaks as well right here in the center. I like to have the option of either putting on the rails or the stationary one in the middle as well depending on what kind of fishing I'm doing and if I'm going through tight trees and things like that. So the way I would like to do this is using the ram one inch ball, the ram mount one inch ball. And I'm going to drill three holes, one in the top and two in the sides. Now this is metal here so you can go ahead and um, drill right through. And of course Jackson provided you the perfect circle <laughs> to put this on. I have a pretty good suspicion this was made for it. So let's drill the holes here. And just so I'm not off, I like to go ahead and put my screw inside of there first. And then drill my other holes. Now with the three holes drilled and the screw sticking through the other side, I open up the middle hatch and I'm going to put on the rubber and metal washers, rubber side up, of course. And then, of course, I'm going to apply the lock nuts. Okay, and with them all tightened down nice and tight, we're uh, water sealed and ready to go. So now I can choose to mount my finder either on the side or with the ram mount arm here I can easily move it to the center we're ready to go one more important thing when it comes to your raymarine cable here you'll need to slide the little tab all the way up and take your ferret and encapsulate the two cables inside the cavity there. And go ahead and close it down. And then you can use the zip ties that came with it to put one in front and one behind it so that it doesn't slide up and down. Helps keep it in place a little more. 
All right, as you can see here, the zip ties have been cut off at the top there. And one more thing, as you're traveling down the road, you don't want this flopping around in the wind everywhere. So what I like to do is just take a zip tie, a Velcro zip tie like this, and I just wrap it around this metal part here and the front part of the cable, thread it through, zip it tight, and then just wrap it around. Now when you're going down the road, it'll stay nice and snug and it won't go flying around. Before you get started putting your transducer inside the hole, you want to make sure your kayak is nice and flat as if it was sitting in the water. The best way to do this is to grab a couple of pillows that you're not going to need for a bit and go ahead and put them underneath the sides so that it can't rock from left to right. Okay, it's time to mount the transducer inside of the hole at the bottom of the kayak. Now you can do this at the front of the kayak, inside of the front hatch, but I prefer to do it here in the center hatch, right below where my fish finder is going to be. And you're going to need the Ray Marine Goop that I mentioned earlier. Make sure you get the, uh, the Marine brand or version of this. And I did lie earlier, you're also going to need some duct tape as well, but that's kind of a gimme anyways, right? So let's go ahead and open the hatch. I'm doing the strap and bringing it up. You'll see in here they already give you a perfect little foam piece here so you can separate where I normally put my battery, which is up front here, and then other accessories in here if I would like. So to open this and get to the bottom, you simply pinch this center together and then lift it out like that. I've already prepped that area by wiping it down with a dry cloth and then also wiping it down with isopropyl alcohol as well just to clean off any oils left behind by my hand. So let's take a closer look inside and get this thing ready. Now with all the debris gone and it wiped down nice and clean, we're going to run a bead of the marine goop in the same length as the transducer there. So about eight inches, eight or nine inches there, right in the center. And then we're going to apply the transducer on top of the, the goop. Now, it's important that you don't have any air bubbles in this bead that you use. So when you open your marine goop, make sure that you open it and have a nice wide opening so that you can get a good bead on it. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, I did speed that up a bit, but you'll want to take it nice and slow with a nice steady squeeze constantly so that you get your goop in there with no bubbles as you see down here. Now what we need are a couple pieces of duct tape that are about eight or nine inches long here. What these are going to do is they're going to hold transducer in place while it dries and if you want you can just leave it there as well. So first take the transducer, place it in the goop nice and gently. Press down lightly so that the goop kind of comes out of the sides here a little bit but not so that you push it all the way down onto the bottom of the kayak. And then take your tape and apply it to hold it on so that it holds it nice and straight while it dries because this is going to take two days to dry and you should leave it in here for a good 48 hours before moving it. So let's go ahead and put the center hatch back in the middle here while our transducer is drying. And I just put some light in here so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. Alright, so we have a 
3 8 inch grommet here that we're going to use for that hole. And so you'll need a 3 8 inch drill bit. And let's go ahead and drill our hole here. And now with our hole drilled, we can put the grommet in. Now with the grommet in place in the 3 8 inch hole, we can thread the cable through that's going to connect to the battery inside of this center hatch. Now I love putting my battery in this center hatch and the reason is because after eight hours on the water or longer, your battery is going to run out and you can have a spare in here and swap it out right in the middle of the day without having to go to shore. So let's thread the cable that's inside the hole right now through this grommet. That's it for this video. In another video, I will cover how to make a watertight battery box that you can put in that center hatch. And I'll put a link to that video once it's uh, completed. I hope you found some tips and some suggestions here that will give you the confidence to rig your kayak as well. All the things you learned today can really be applied to any sit-on-top kayak and really any fish finder as well. I will also leave a list of some of the parts and different things that were used during this build in case you have any questions. And if you do have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you like this video, please click like and please subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. But for now, I want to thank you all for watching and I'll see you on the water.